All right, so the Minnesota Vikings, they lost to the New England Patriots by a final score of 24-10 to 10 at Foxborough. This is the Mediocre and Best Sports Podcast with Realistic Randy. Thank you for tuning in. So let's get a couple of things out the way. Normally, with a loss like this and how stupid the Vikings look, how they looked on the field yesterday, mostly on the offense. I'll get into that in just a second. Mike Zimmer, you know what? Normally, it's like I would rip on him, but if we're going to accept the fact that all he is is a defensive coordinator posing as a head coach, I will give him a pass on that. You can only do but so much with Xavier Rose and Trey Waynes, who, in my opinion, Trey Waynes has been our best cornerback this year. Both of those guys were out. You can only do so much with Mackenzie Alexander, Holton Hill, and God help us all, Marcus Sherrill's playing cornerback out there. So there's only so, but so much you can do. But I'll still get into Mike Zimmerman a little bit, Rick Spillman, John Filippo, even Mike Prefer. I got some things to say about him. But normally I get on this this rant, this tangent about, you know, oh, the Vikings, they just did this. And I, I honestly just don't have the energy in me in, anymore. Because a couple of weeks ago, maybe, what was it, two podcasts ago, I said that the Minnesota Vikings – are the biggest frauds in the NFL. And the reason that I say that is because they get all this hype, we get all this talent, and all all these expectations. But when it comes to crunch time, when it comes to big-time games, the Minnesota Vikings are nowhere to be found. And where do we even start with this game? Let's start with, uh, I don't know, let's start with the fact that on Skull Weekly, so that joint podcast that I do with SK, on Skull Weekly, and we posted this on uh, Facebook on Sunday. We're now doing this as like a Vikings pregame show, if you will. I actually thought about this, and I know I said in my last podcast, I was like, hey, you'll beat the Packers, or they did beat the Packers. I was like, hey, you'll beat the Miami Dolphins. You'll probably beat the Detroit Lions. As far as the Patriots and the Seattle Seahawks, I have no idea what's going to happen. I'll give my prediction a little bit later. On Skull Weekly, I predicted that the Vikings would beat the New England Patriots, and the reason why is that, The New England Patriots, I did some uh, numbers crunching and and looked up some stats. It's really crazy how this worked out. I had to almost like squint my eyes a little bit like, really? This is is really the truth of what's happening with this Patriots team? The New England Patriots, as as far as the defense is concerned, I thought the defensive line, I think the defensive line for the Minnesota Vikings, I think they've made up for a lot of the inadequacies of this Vikings defense as a whole. I think our linebacker play overall has been extra leaky. I've been a big fan of Eric Wilson before he started getting playing time. It really hasn't worked out. Anthony Barr, he's been hurt, but even when he's been back, it's still been kind of up and down. Some games he'll be great. Some games he'll be eh, okay. Eric Hendricks, he's regressed a little bit. And then Xavier Rhodes has really regressed compared to his his his, his shutdown corner, his number one cornerback spot, if you will. Rhodes are no longer closed. They're wide the hell open. But the defensive line has really hid a lot of the inadequacies throughout the rest of the defense. And they give the luxury to where, and I wrote this about this in the Viking Age, where Sheldon Richardson, his addition to this Vikings defensive line, it gives so much pressure to where you don't necessarily have to blitz as much. So I thought the Vikings defensive line would have a great game against the Patriots. They didn't really do that. They had a couple of plays here and there. But for the most part, Bill Belichick, hey, that's coaching. You counteract that and you come up with adjustments. You you do a lot of misdirection plays. And they did that a lot compared to Chicago, too, where we saw that the Patriots and the Chicago Bears where a lot of misdirection plays, getting their guys out in space. Cordero Patterson, he made a couple of plays against the Vikings. I'm sure he feels really good about that. And I'm like, with the Vikings offense, you should be doing the same thing. With this Vikings offense we have, with the players that we have, there's no reason that we should be extra conservative like we have been. But I thought the defensive line would get after it. And then the Patriots defense. The Patriots defense was bottom 10 coming into this week against the, uh, before the, uh, the Vikings game on Sunday. The Patriots defense was bottom 10 in passing yards allowed, bottom 10 in third down conversion rate. So bottom 10 in opposing offenses, third down conversion rate. And they were third to last in sacks. Third to last in sacks accumulated before that Vikings game on Sunday. Kirk Cousins took two sacks for 18 yards, and the Viking, the Patriots defensive line, they just pushed the, they just pushed the, uh, the Vikings offensive line around like it was nothing. Rick Spielman, look, I, I've, I've really, I've been hovering around the fire Rick Spielman button long enough. I'm just going. You're six five and one. You're basically six and six. You're basically an average ass team. You still have yet to beat a team over five hundred. You still have yet to beat a team with a with a with a winning record. 
I'm sorry. You don't. You haven't taken your job seriously, Rick. Straight up, bro. And the, the amount of Vikings fans that have came after me, whether it's on Twitter or on Facebook or whatever the hell else, or even on YouTube in the comment section, wherever I bring up this off this offensive line. Okay, I don't want to hear a damn thing. I said this in real time at the draft. This isn't some uh, epiphany where it's like, oh, man, dude, the Vikings offensive line, what's happening? Oh, I don't know. Things are falling apart. No, I said this in real time at the draft. You didn't invest in the offensive line. The amount of fans that have came after me to justify Rick Spielman and say, well, what were they supposed to do? It's like we had no choice but to accept a crappy offensive line. You did nothing. You literally did not a damn thing, Rick Spielman, to upgrade the offensive line. You brought in Brian O'Neill. Okay, fine. We were good at right tackle. You took our right tackle who was okay. And by the way, I was a big critic of Mike Remmers before they brought him in. When they brought him in, the signing was announced uh, in the 2017 offseason. I was like, man, and you can see it from Carolina fans. Carolina fans, I would argue, were just as happy to see Mike Remmers go as ha- as much as we as Vikings fans were happy to see Matt Khalil go. They were equally just as happy, okay? But Mike Remmers, to his credit, in 2017, he was okay. He was adequate. And I've always said, as long as we have an average offensive line, We'll be fine. It's all good. We'll be golden. No big deal. Mike Remmers was fine at right tackle. You took our guy that was fine at right tackle and decide to move him to right guard because you have you have no other bodies to fill that spot. Even the fact Nick Easton, before he got hurt in the offseason, Nick Easton wasn't necessarily a shoe-in. I was thinking along the lines that you should address the interior offensive lineman to where Nick Easton, he's been okay, and maybe he could have been a starter had he not gotten hurt. But you, you should still have him go through competition. You should still have him prove his worth to make sure he should be the starting left guard. He got hurt. Tom Compton, he's been okay, except for that this dumbass game he had. He had two, what, two holding penalties called on him like a jackass. Not a jackass like he's a jackass. He just performed like a jackass out there. I'm sure he's a good guy. But Rick Spielman, you haven't been taking your job seriously enough. Rick Spielman is the type of guy where you build, let's say, the 68 Mustang. You get everything all worked up. All you got to do is, is change the oil. Just change the oil. Just change the oil, and you'll be good to go. You can take it out on the track or take it out for a nice uh, a nice joy ride up to Tahoe, wherever the hell else vac- vacation spots you may have. And Rick Spielman is like, all right, we got all we got to do is change the oil, right? And Rick Spielman will be like, no, nah, you don't understand. We need to put on some tinted windows, baby. But, Rick, all you got to do is put oil in the car. Just change the oil, and you'll be fine. No, 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 no. Let's run this old-ass oil. It'll be fine. We can go down the street. Let's get these tenant windows and let's see what happens. That's what you did with Mike Hughes, okay? That's what you did. You went out and got a cornerback. You went out and got Brian O'Neill, who didn't address any positions of need on the offensive line. You have not taken your job seriously enough. If this Vikings team does not make the playoffs, Rick Spielman should be fired straight up because you're wasting all these prime these prime years of this talent that we have, and you're wasting one out of these three years that we have with the Kirk Cousins project. If you don't make the playoffs, Rick Spielman should be fired. This is what you decided. You decided that the offensive line was okay. So I don't want to hear no concerns from you or say, oh, we got to be – we said this in real time. Everybody did. You had more access to these players than we do. And everybody else out there, me, myself included, and a bunch of other people said, where's the offensive line? You didn't do it. He's not Case Keenum. That's all I'm going to say on Rick Spielman. You don't make the playoffs. Enough is enough. You should be fired. We need a new GM that's going to take this team seriously. Not some dude that's just going to go out there and be cute and get all these gadgets for stuff that we don't need. You need to invest. You invested in that $84 million quarterback. You need You need to invest in resources surrounding him, and you didn't do it. You don't make the playoffs. You're fired. Outside of that, well, who else we got? Zimmer, Mike Zimmer. We're accepting this dude as a defensive coordinator. He's supposedly a head coach. I've made this very clear. I don't think the Vikings are going to win a, win, win a Super Bowl with Mike Zimmer as a head coach. I just don't think it's possible. I think with a defensive-minded head coach, you can only get but so far. And besides the fact that I, I say, look, you can only do so much with Xavier Rose and Trey Waynes being out. I get that. I thought the defense did. I thought they were relatively okay as the game went later on. To start the game, they were crappy. They A lot of misdirection plays from the Patriots. All their players were getting in space out there making plays on us left and right. It seemed like our dudes were lost. But as the game went on, I thought they were okay. Not necessarily great, but they were okay. The defensive line, they wasn't getting as much penetration as they have been in the last seven, maybe eight weeks, two months-ish 
or so with this uh, as far as the last couple of weeks in the season. But as far as Mike Zimmer, what excuses are we going to come up for this guy? I get it. I'm not blaming him for that loss against the Patriots, okay? I thought he did as well as he could as a glorified defensive coordinator. But what excuses are we going to come up with this guy? For example, I've looked this up three times, okay? So maybe I'm wrong. I've, I've checked this. I fact-checked this three times. The Minnesota Vikings have played under Mike Zimmer since he's been the head coach since 2014. The Minnesota Vikings have played 17 nationally televised games, okay? You want to guess their record? Let's get – you want to guess their record as far as what it's been like the past 17 games of, as far as nationally televised games under Mike Zimmer, okay? Nine and eight. And the only reason you're nine and eight is because you beat the Packers last week, last Sunday night, what was that, at U.S. Bank Stadium. And by the way – all the Packers fans, I remember last year, they are like, oh, Mike, uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers, he's out. Wait till he comes back. You'll be sorry. Now you're 4-7-1, and, and you're sitting there looking dumb. Well, see what happened. Well, see, I've never taken y'all seriously. All Packers fans, I've never taken y'all seriously. I've never taken your, your, your organization seriously because you're a bunch of frauds. Your organization is a fraud. You have one dude that carries your asses, and you can only get but so far. So, Outside of that, you're nothing. The Chicago Bears, they're the only team worth worrying about. And by the way, they lost to the New York Giants uh, in overtime after that uh, kicker made the kick in overtime. You shouldn't even gotten to that point. You were up 10 points left with like a minute and a half or two minutes left, and you gave up an onside kick the Giants did. But what's crazy is before the game or before Sunday, I predicted that the Vikings would win. And then once I started getting nervous, the Chicago Bears, once they lost to the Giants, I was like, oh, we'll probably lose this game. Because once the universe aligns for the Vikings, where it's like, hey, all these other teams are losing, just win, and you'll get a leg up as far as where you stand in the playoffs, they lose almost 100% of the time. But getting back to Mike Zimmer, nationally televised games, all the excuses we come up for this dude, 9-8 and eight in nationally televised games. And actually, three of those nine wins that you got, Week 17 in 2017 last year against Brett Hundley and the Green Bay Packers, okay, who, by the way, finished 7-9. and nine. Then in week 16 in the 2015 season, you played the New York Giants, who, uh, who by the way, after losing to the Philadelphia Eagles in week 17, they finished 6-10 and 10 in that year, okay, in 2015 season. Then... And on, uh, on uh, there was a Sunday London game, I think it was last year, against the Cleveland Browns. Congratulations. That's three wins. So really, you're six and eight. Really, you're six and eight, unless I really dig deep. And as far as the quality of opponents are concerned, you're really six and eight. Okay, so what is it about Mike Zimmer? Why do we sit here and come up with passes for this dude every single time? Again, against the Patriots, you're fine, whatever. But as far as overall big picture, I don't want to hear, and it's amazing the amount of excuses we come up with. They lost to the Rams. They lost to the Saints. They lost to the Bears. I'm like, yo, you need to be the winning team. And every single time I brought that up, well, they've, and all the responses that I've got, well, they lost to the Rams. They lost to the Bears. They lost to the Saints. What are you going to do? If you're a Super Bowl contending team, which is what this team has made themselves or propped themselves up to be, there is no, well, it's just the Rams. Well, it's just the Bears. Well, it's just the Saints. Well, it's just the Patriots. You're the Vikings. You're the Viking. There is no, well, it's just this team we just went against. How many time, How many excuses are we going to come up for this dude? You need an offensive-minded head coach. And by the way, before I get into John Filippo and his ass real quick, Mike Prefer, I held back on this guy long enough. Mike Prefer, again, with Mike Prefer, I'm like, all right, it's Blair Walsh or this and that. Maybe things just aren't working out. But I'm sorry, you got to go. I'm still trying to sit here while I'm recording this podcast, while I'm talking to you guys right now. I'm still trying to figure out how the hell was it that Matt Weil, who the placeholder for the field goal kicker, Dan Bailey, why was he the last person to come out on the field in that first half? Why, was that in the first quarter? Why was he the last person to come out on the field? Why was he? With 10 seconds left to go to execute a play for that field goal, he was the last person to walk out. What, was he getting high? Does Massachusetts, do they have a legalized marijuana policy now? Can dudes get high? Was he drinking Sam Adams to embrace New England? What was up with this dude? That's coaching right there. That's organized. You were so unorganized on that play. And once he got out there with 10 seconds left before Dan Bailey could kick the ball off, I said he's going to miss that kick. He's going to miss it. And like clockwork, he missed it. Just like, and you know what's funny? When Vikings play, when Vikings kickers, when they trot out on the field, I don't have the energy. I Honest to God, 
I don't have the energy anymore to get mad at kickers. I expect them to miss now. It's almost like, it's almost comedy at this point. You should play basically like, you, you know that Harlem Globetrotters music? They go, they should play that while kickers go out onto the field. Because it's comedy. You should basically, I don't know. Also play the cartoonish music, the sound effects where the uh, dudes are slipping on banana peels. And basically, that's what's happening with our kickers. And one Twitter follower said, this dude, Christ himself could come down from heavens, could come down from the heavens and be our kicker, and he'll still go 0 for 3 against the Seattle Seahawks. It's amazing. Mike Prefer, you should be fired. You've gotten a pass long enough. Then we get to John Filippo. We've had no problem firing Norb Turner in the middle of the 2016 season. John Filippo, you need to get the hell out of town. I'm telling you right now, where do we got right now? Where are these stats right now? Where do I got? Okay, got it right here. Fourth and inches, right? Fourth and inches, this dude, John Filippo. you don't have, you, you could have called a quarterback sneak. We've been saying this for the last couple of weeks. You called a quarter, you could have called a quarterback sneak, a uh, quarterback sneak. You didn't do that. You could have CJ Ham maybe to throw the defense off as far as a fullback. You didn't do that. What did you do? You hand the ball off to Latavius Murray, a basic ass handoff, which everybody expected. Everybody expected that to happen. And all of a sudden, you get bailed out by a bad first down call play. Uh, by a bad first down call, it shouldn't have been that. That was turnover on downs. Then they reviewed it. Bill Belichick reviewed it, threw the flag out. And they said, no, 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 no. Not only, we're going to uphold this ruling. I was like, that's a turnover on downs, whatever. Then what happens? You turn the ball over on downs. You couldn't make nothing. You throw the ball to Laquan. You have, why is Laquan Treadwell on the field? Why is he on the field? Fourth and 11 or whatever the hell that was, Laquan Treadwell still on the field. Algic Robinson is play, making plays left and right. Laquan Treadwell still on the field. It's crazy. It's incompetency. You're not taking your, your job seriously either. Either that or you're just not good enough to let alone be a head coach. You're not good enough to be an offensive coordinator. Straight up. John Filippo, you're a fraud. Then Eric Kendricks gets the interception, grabs the interception, spots you about five and a half minutes left-ish, down two scores, your offense can do nothing, you turn the ball over, it is what it is. You're a fraud, dog. Why does it only take for this offense to get their backs against the wall once we're down a couple of scores for then for you to decide, okay, let's open up the playbook more? Uh, never, Let alone the fact that for most of the first half up until that, uh, that final possession on offense, the check down show the minnesota vikings we introduce you to the check down show check down after check down after mother freaking check down to latavius murray dalvin cook all these check downs left to right you can throw the ball down the field you need permission to do that is that what you need you know it's crazy we got kyle rudolph we got stefan diggs we got adam thielen we got Dalvin Cook. We have all these weapons on offense but we're running a please don't make any mistakes offense are you serious right now you got all these weapons that can make plays left to right. You can do some things. Oh, my God. Please don't make mistakes offense. Man, get the hell out of here. You can join Mike McCarthy to whatever buffet, Golden Corral, and get fat or whatever. You can be whatever head coach you want, head coaching candidate. My ass, get the hell out of town. He should be fired. Fired on the spot. I don't care if Trevor Simeon makes play or if, he, if he's making calls, Trevor Simeon, let him make calls on offense. I don't care. We should have a random drawing from anybody in the state of Minnesota. You want to come out here and call plays for the offense? You can come out there and do it. Kevin Stefanski, I don't care. Somebody else, John D. Filippo, you're not taking your job seriously. You're too scared, dude. You're too scared. With these weapons on offense, how are you going to go somewhere else and be the head coach? Okay, how are you going to – with these weapons, any offensive coordinator out there, any, any legitimate – Offensive coordinator out there would kill to be in a position that you're in right now and you're sitting there being soft. Man, go out, man, get the hell somewhere. Let me be the offensive coordinator. I guarantee you, I won't have Laquan Treadwell on the field with five and a half minutes left and down two scores. I can promise you that. So, anyway, I'm done. I don't really have, I kind of went on a rant, but. Honestly, I'm not surprised. I thought they would win. I thought that it was up there for the taking. But the offensive line, Rick Spielman, you let this go to you let this just bleep the bed. You went out there. You could have kept Kai Forbath. He's mentally tough. You invested your time in kicker instead of the offensive line. They don't make the playoffs. You should be fired. Mike Zimmer, I don't think he's a head coach to take this team to the Super Bowl. But I would understand if you want to give him one more year. Mike Mike, Mike Prefer and John D. Filippo, they should be fired right now. They should be fired on the spot right now. 
if if Rick Spielman gets up on that podium on Monday and says anything other than we have fired Mike Prefer and John DeFilippo, that you can fire your ass too. You should quit. Put turn in your pink slip, whatever the hell else you can go. So anyway, we do this uh twice a week now. We'll be talking Minnesota Timberwolves on Thursday. I don't have the energy anymore, man. Pew, pew, pew. What the kicker gonna do now? It's like 50%. Dan Bailey was one of the most accurate kickers in the league, and now he sucks. I have nothing else to say. Matt Wilde sitting there getting drunk on the sidelines when he needs to go out on the field. We'll see you on Thursday.